Emily was staring at Eric on the computer screen in her office. She couldn't hide the smile on her face. What are you looking at that makes you smile so much? Estelle knocked on the door a few times, but no one answered. When she pushed the door open and entered, she saw the smile on Emily's face and immediately teased. She walked closer and saw that it was indeed Eric on the screen. She clicked her tongue and asked, Am I early? Emily smiled and turned off the computer first. Then she said, Not early at all. Why do you ask? Estelle raised her eyebrows. Now you have started to show off your affection openly? Yes. Emily nodded in all seriousness. I have been waiting for such a long time. Okay, I have looked through the plans of the Mender family carefully and found nothing. Estelle smiled and placed the documents on the table. Recently, everything in Cooper's had been going smoothly. Nothing had happened, so Emily was especially assured. All right, I'll read the full reports later. Emily nodded. Then I will leave first. I will not disturb you while you look at your man any longer. Estelle smiled and waved her hand. She turned around and left. Emily lowered her head and smiled helplessly. After thinking for a long time, she took out her phone and quietly dialed a number. After a short beeping sound, Eric's voice was heard. Hello? Do you have time tonight, Eric? I'd love to have dinner with you. I think we should celebrate your new position. Emily was smiling and her eyes were sparkling. I'd like that. I will pick you up at 6.30. What do you want to eat? What about seafood? Sure. Sounds good to me. He was so handsome on the screen. After Eric hung up the phone, the smile on his face disappeared. Call them in. Damon was scared by the coldness on Eric's face. He did not dare to delay and immediately called the people who were waiting outside the door. Most of them were the management level people who had been hired by Allison. They had been tenured with the Parker family for some time, although they had little talent for business. At this moment, they had stayed outside the door for over 10 minutes. Their faces were already extremely pale. When they came in and saw Eric, one of them was so scared that his legs were trembling. Eric looked at these people quietly and asked coldly, Do you know why I called you in? Do you need anything from us? One of them had some courage, but after he opened his mouth, he stuttered because he was nervous. Eric revealed a mocking smile. What do I need you to do? Hmm, what can you do? As he spoke, he threw the documents on the table. Open your eyes wide. This is your performance since your appointment. Commerce, marketing department, and the R&D department. All of these departments have declined. What do I need you to do? Eric's voice was not loud, but it was full of vigor. It scared these people so much that cold sweat broke out on their foreheads, and their backs turned cold. Although they had sensed something was wrong when they found out that Eric had returned, they thought it would probably take him some time to get back into the swing of things. Moreover, the news that Mr. Parker was in the hospital had just broken that morning. Most of those gathered figured the Parker family would be busy dealing with that. They were wrong. They did not expect Eric would move so quickly. Eric, we were told by Allison and Evelyn we would have time to grow into our positions. We are still learning our positions. This has nothing to do with last year's market. Eric's voice thundered in the confines of the conference room. When the person finished speaking, he saw Eric looking at him. He wilted, lowering his gaze. I don't need to listen to excuses. What I need is to see you actually apply yourself in your jobs. You have been far too hesitant when making decisions. There are far too many mistakes, too. Take ownership of your mistakes and learn from them. From this point forward, you will be moved back to your original positions. There will be a probationary period. If anyone stumbles, they will be fired. You will have a chance to move back to your management positions. But for now, you are demoted. All of you. That is it. He paused. And when he saw the faces of everyone gathered, he knew he had made the right choice. The losses have been extensive. This will not stand. We have to stop the bleeding and restore the Parker family to its former glory. Damon will put the amount of losses incurred in everyone's mailbox. You have 30 days to turn things around. If you can't turn your departments around, you will no longer be employed here. The expressions changed. Everyone knew how much money had been lost. How could they hope to change things in 30 days? Eric sneered. 
I'm giving you a chance. One chance. I need to see changes immediately. You can leave now if you don't think you're up to the task. But if you stay, things have to change. The people had never thought that Eric would be so tough when he came back. He had been ruthless prior to his return, but they thought it would take him a while to find his footing. They knew there was no choice but to do what he asked for, seek their life's work elsewhere. Damon looked at their miserable appearances and figured half of them wouldn't make it. Serves them right. They were all arrogant and trying to curry favor with Allison when you were first reappointed. They deserve this. Eric raised his eyebrows. Announce the appointments. In addition, you can start preparing to welcome Allison. He had just made a bold choice. How would Allison react? After Allison heard the news, she immediately rushed to the Parker family. What do you mean? Do you know what kind of situation we are in now? Allison pointed at Eric's face and scolded him. Why are you doing this? Do you have any idea what you are doing? You are making such a big commotion. Do you want to make our internal structure completely collapse? When Allison rushed all the way to the Parker family, reminding herself she needed to stay calm, but that all went out the window when she saw Eric's face. Her anger filled her chest, her body trembling. Why are you here? Didn't you say that you couldn't leave the hospital for a moment? How can you say one thing but do another? Is this how you've been running things here? Eric raised his eyebrows and looked at Allison as if he was looking at a clown. Do you want me to just stand by and watch you kill the Parker family? Allison shouted. Eric was still unmoved. Since you have handed over the management rights of the Parker family, I will let you go. Then whatever decision I make, you have no right to question it. Allison bit her lips. She did not expect Eric to move so quickly. Moreover, the group of people who had been demoted were all of her hires. If she did not think of a way to resolve this matter, it would mean Eric would have complete control over the Parker family. You are only doing this for your own benefit. Eric, don't think that I don't realize this. The people you promoted all followed you in the past. What right do you have to do this? Allison, I've outlined all the moves I've made and will be making. I believe in transparency. Since you don't, let me explain. I want everyone to know why I'm making these decisions, so they understand it isn't personal. Things are different now. The flow won't be based on your whimsy. If your hires prove themselves, they can stay. If they can't, they know where the door is. I've given them 30 days, which is more time than I should give you. The days of using the Parker family as your little playground are over, Allison. Allison was trembling with anger, but she opened her mouth and was speechless. Since you have returned the Parker family to me, you should stay in the hospital. Monitor Grandpa. I know you were so worried about him, right? Allison's expression transformed. What nonsense are you talking about? Whether I'm talking nonsense or not, you know very well in your heart that I know what you're up to. He glared at Allison, his gaze melting her resolve. Allison was panicking and did not dare to say anything. She forced herself to calm down. How long do you think you're going to be in power, Eric? There are others here who don't welcome your presence. You better watch your back. After saying that, Allison hurriedly turned around and left. However, as she walked in the elevator, her body felt colder and colder. What did Eric mean by that? Did he already know something? How could he know? The elevator door opened, but Allison did not move for a long time. She burned with intense hatred for Eric. At six o'clock, Eric settled all the matters in the Parker family and left. He was going to pick up Emily. As he walked to the parking lot, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up. Something was wrong. He turned around and realized a wooden staff was heading toward his face. He dodged it and stepped aside. Eric frowned. He saw two masked men behind him. One of them was holding a staff and spun it with practiced precision. The two men stepped forward again. Eric dodged backward, lifting his hands to protect his head from the staff. When they hit him, he kicked the man directly in front of him. When he fell to the ground, Eric quickly grabbed the staff. They were undeterred and continued to attack. Eric dodged left and right, striking both men across their upheld arms and faces. They were bleeding from several wounds, but continued to attack. He struck both men in the head, knocking them to the ground. He took advantage of the situation and raced toward his car. 
He started his car and drove from the parking lot quickly, but he wasn't quick enough. Two cars raced on either side of him. They crashed into him at the same time. Eric pushed down the accelerator to try to outrun them, but it was no use. It was then realized his brakes had been tampered with. He couldn't stop his car and careened into the concrete wall. Eric's head struck the windshield, knocking him out. The two cars raced away from the accident site, leaving Eric unconscious and unmoving in the driver's seat. Emily stood below her company building and looked at the time. There were still 10 minutes left. She couldn't see Eric's car. She knew he would be on time. He was always punctual. She hoped he would come early. She smiled, thinking of being with him. Emily hadn't been this happy in so long. Thinking of this, she smiled gently. She couldn't wait for their dinner tonight. The chef had promised his finest seafood to them both. It would be wonderful. Besides, she had nothing to do tomorrow, so she could stay in the hospital with Eric until tomorrow. The smile on Emily's face grew deeper and deeper. Her phone rang. She took it out and realized it was Eric calling. She chuckled, wondering if he was going to play a trick on her. She connected the call. However, in a short five seconds, Emily's expression changed drastically. Her smile was still frozen on her face, but her face turned extremely pale. Emily felt numb all over, losing her grip on her phone. It fell to the ground with a clatter. By the time Emily arrived at the hospital, Eric had already been sent into surgery. How could this have happened? The idea she would lose Eric so soon after recovering him was heavy on her mind. Please let him be okay. The scene of Eric being forcefully dragged into the sea by Adrian kept replaying in her mind. Over and over again, it gnawed at her heart, making her almost have no strength left. Why did this happen? Why was God so cruel to her and Eric? She thought of how hard he had fought to be by her side and cried. As time passed, Emily's face was pale. Her eyes were red from crying. She chewed on her fingernails nervously. She didn't know what to do with herself as she waited for any news. Emily, what happened to Eric? Franklin and Helen rushed over to the hospital when they heard the news. Their faces looked haggard, tears in Helen's eyes. I don't know. The hospital found my number in Eric's phone and notified me, but I do not know what really happened. They told me the brakes failed on Eric's car. The short words seemed to have exhausted all of Emily's strength. Her legs were weak and she had to lean against the wall for support. At this moment, the door of the operation room suddenly opened. The doctor rushed out and announced, The patient has lost a lot of blood. We need AB blood donations immediately. Emily's vision turned black and she almost fainted. Franklin quickly raised his hand and said, I am... If you are a direct relative of Eric, we cannot accept your blood for transfusion. We need someone who is not related to Eric to donate blood. Emily's heart was in chaos. She finally found her voice and rushed to the front. I can donate. Please take my blood. The tears that she endured completely burst out at this moment. Emily cried out in grief. Even if she had to drain all of her blood, she would do it to save Eric. The doctor glanced at Emily and ordered people to start preparing. The moment Emily stretched out on the operating table, she looked at the hurried figures next to the curtain, and the figure of Eric was in the next room. Emily helplessly closed her eyes. She knew in her heart of hearts that she would do anything to save Eric, even if it meant her life. She wanted him to be in her life and didn't want to be alone without him. She only wished that Eric would wake up safely. Because of her emotional trials and the sudden loss of blood, Emily did not even step out of the operating room before she fainted. Eric was still in surgery. Evelyn found Allison when she heard the news. Did you do it right? Evelyn looked at her sister in disbelief. Allison did not hide it. She was even a little proud of herself. After seeing the photos at the scene, the anger in her heart was released and she felt relieved. So she admitted frankly, Yes! I found someone to arrange it. I want them to suffer like this. Are you crazy? Even though Evelyn had been holding it in, she could not help bursting out at this moment. You can't kill him. What if he wakes up? He will definitely know that you did it. Do you know what the consequences will be? Also, if you really kill him, what will we do? This is a disaster. 
Allison did not expect Evelyn to react this way. She immediately said with a sullen face, What else can we do? Were we just going to watch him slowly take the Parker family out from under us? Do you know what he did today? He demoted all of my people and replaced them with his people. But you shouldn't react so rashly. Didn't we say before that you have to discuss everything with me? Evelyn was furious with her sister. Allison's expression immediately turned cold. Evelyn, you are not my boss. Evelyn was so angry that she wanted to slap Allison's face. She took a deep breath. You've made a big mess into a monumental mess. There are so many people in the Parker family watching. Now that Eric has been hurt, they will investigate further. What if Emily finds out about what you've done? What should we do if she finds out about those things? When she heard this, Allison indeed frowned. No one will find out. Something happened to Eric. She will be too involved in nursing him back to health. Evelyn could not help rolling her eyes. If not for the fact that Allison still had some value, Evelyn wouldn't have cared if she was alive or dead. She was continually making things worse for both of them. Just when Evelyn thought they were out of the woods, her sister did something else dumber than the time before. It was exhausting being Allison's sister. What had she agreed to all of her suggestions? They were all coming back to haunt them now. Evelyn wasn't sure they would recover from her latest mistake. They had to endure the next wave of scrutiny and investigation. And if it came out that Allison was responsible, Evelyn was more than prepared to cut ties with her and throw her under the bus. Have the people you arranged already left? We can't leave behind a scrap of evidence. Not one scrap. Don't worry, I have it all under control. Evelyn never doubted her sister more than at that moment. Remember, those who achieve great things are never overly cautious. They dare to be great. We have to dare to be great. Can Eric run the Parker family now? Of course not. We're not even sure if he will survive his injuries. That will teach him to mess with me. Allison's eyes caught the overhead light and glinted like diamonds in the sand. Evelyn wondered if she even knew how insane she was. Evelyn's expression remained solemn. She had other plans. When Emily woke up again, her eyelids felt heavy and her vision was fuzzy. Her mind went blank for a moment. When she regained her senses, she immediately tried to sit up. Emily, don't move. Mr. Cooper rushed over and held his daughter down as she tried to get up from the bed. He whispered, You fainted because of the blood transfusion. You shouldn't move now. Where is Eric? Dad, where is he? Emily asked anxiously. She was not in the mood to worry about herself. Her mind was full of Eric. Mr. Cooper clasped her hand. He has made it through surgery. The doctor said that his condition is good and he has passed the critical recovery period. Now he is only waiting to wake up. Please let me see him. Emily's eyes were filled with tears. She was begging. Mr. Cooper could only nod weakly. He gave in to her. Emily quickly removed the needle from her arm and rushed to Eric's room. The person who was standing in front of her yesterday was now lying on the hospital bed. His forehead was wrapped in gauze and his face was covered with various wounds. How could this be? Will there be any side effects? Emily quickly looked away and wiped her tears. Now was not the time to cry. There were too many things that needed to be taken care of in the Parker family. It was absolutely impossible to rely on Franklin and Helen alone. The doctor has said nothing yet. We have to wait until he wakes up. Mr. Cooper sighed deeply. He felt sorry for his daughter, seeing her struggling with her emotions. However, there was very little he could do. I have already told the company I'll temporarily take care of it for the next few days. Take care of Eric's and the Parker family's matters. Help me take care of them. Emily took a deep breath and wiped the tears from her face. Have you found out about this? The accident happened in a lot with broken surveillance cameras at a time when no one was in the lot. It seems very suspicious. Emily's face was stiff. Someone must have arranged for all of this to happen. I think Allison must be behind this. She can't handle the pressure any longer. Please look into Allison. Yes, of course. Mr. Cooper nodded. That's right, even the brakes failed. Someone must have sabotaged them. 
I want you to go to the police station and tell them that Eric and Allison had a dispute. Then look for the money transfer records of Allison and the people around her. I will make her pay for what she's done. Emily was no longer helpless, her anger fueling her energy. After realizing Eric was safe, she quickly calmed herself down and arranged everything. Also, Allison must have wanted to expose this matter. She wanted to seize the opportunity while Eric was unconscious to take back the Parker family. Mr. Cooper nodded. I know, don't worry, this matter will not spread. Thank you. Emily rubbed her temples and nodded. The next morning, Emily rubbed her eyes. She had not slept all night and had been guarding Eric, afraid that he would wake up at night alone. Allison did indeed make her move. When she arrived, she immediately rushed to Damon's office and said coldly, Cancel all the appointments Eric made yesterday. Everything has been restored to the arrangements I made previously. Damon had a standard business smile on his face. I don't know why you said that. Yesterday, Eric canceled all the appointments you made. And since you are no longer in charge, you have no authority over me. How dare you? This is me you're talking to. I'm the one in charge. Eric is incapable. He's in the hospital. Listen to me. Allison yelled and then stopped. This differed completely from what she had imagined would be greeting her at the Parker family. Shouldn't Damon be panicking? Why did it seem like nothing had happened? Moreover, he couldn't take the initiative to say it. Otherwise, the suspicion of Eric's accident would fall to her. Where's Eric? Ask him to come out and see me. Allison asked tentatively. There were some matters that needed to be taken care of downtown, so Eric took a plane and went to take care of those problems. Damon said. Allison's face was full of shock. Oh, give me a break. I already know. She once again forcefully held back her words. No one knew about the accident. It hadn't been made public yet. She had to reel in her mouth or she would get herself in trouble. What do you know? Damon still held on to his smile. Allison did not expect him to play this game with her. She was so angry, her jaw clenched. Fine, you are playing dumb. You think I do not know that Eric is in trouble? In trouble? What are you talking about? Damon looked confused. This morning he talked to me. You're saying something happened to him? Could it be that you... Allison was so angry that she almost screamed. She had sworn to come here. She had thought that once the news of Eric's accident spread, she could come back and play the role of stabilizing the morale of the staff. But that wasn't happening. What went wrong? Furthermore, Damon's expression seemed too natural. The way he was acting, it made it seem as if nothing had happened to Eric. Oh, sure, go on, Damon. Be a good little soldier. Let's see how much longer you can endure. Allison pointed at Damon with hatred. Damon looked at her back as she stormed out and let out a deep breath. If Emily hadn't contacted him in time last night, Allison would have gotten what she had wanted. And now, he knew he had to do his best to maintain the Parker family until Eric woke up. Emily rubbed the center of her brows. Eric, who was lying on the bed, still showed no signs of waking up. Although the doctor had said that he had passed the critical period, she still could not rest assured. Do you know? You really turned me into a coward. Emily held Eric's hand that did not have an IV drip and said softly, Although I am not brave, I have never been so afraid of losing someone. She looked at Eric's face. His closed eyes and long breathing made her heart panic more and more. Please come back to me and wake up, okay? I know you can't bear to see me suffer, so wake up quickly. Emily's voice was very quiet, a whisper with a pleading tone. But Eric still did not move, remaining still. Eric's condition was kept out of the news media because of the efforts of the public relations department. Therefore, the Parker family did not know that Eric was still in a coma due to serious injuries. To do her part, Emily didn't stay at the hospital for very long. She didn't want to raise speculation. That afternoon, Emily went to visit Eric's grandfather with Franklin and the others. Allison immediately frowned at her arrival. Are you still in the mood to come here? What do you mean, Allison? Why can't I come? Emily raised her eyebrows and shrugged. Are you still playing dumb with me? Allison said sharply. 
Where's Eric? Why isn't he here? Emily gave her a deep look. Eric went on a business trip this morning. When he comes back, I will be sure to let you know. I know you're very concerned about his well-being. Allison looked at Emily, mouth open, her anxiety gnawing at her. Do you really think I don't know? Emily, I received the troubling news about his injuries. Is he still in the hospital? She lowered her voice and whispered in Emily's ear. Emily looked at her in surprise. Where did you get this news? Why didn't I know? Eric just talked to me. How could something have happened to him? I know your mental state is a little afraid. Are you sure you're okay? Allison was agitated. Every time she thought she had Emily on the ropes, the woman just deflected and moved on. It was infuriating. She stared at Emily and said coldly, All right, then let Eric talk to me. Allison. Emily looked at her quietly. What do you mean? Don't tell me you do not have any evidence to suspect anything. Did you hear something happened to Eric? Who told you? I didn't do anything. Allison quickly stepped back and folded her arms over her chest. Emily raised her eyebrows. Then tell me where your news came from. Allison was furious. She did not expect Emily to be so calm and able to maintain her composure. Immediately, her eyes focused on Emily. All right, let's see how long you can pretend to be stupid for. You better hope Eric is really fine. After she finished speaking, she turned around and left. She went to another ward alone and picked up the phone. After she dialed a number and said, Find him for me. The more Allison thought about it, the more she regretted it. The situation was urgent. Although the monitoring devices were destroyed in the accident, there were people coming to the parking lot at any time. It meant it was possible for there to be witnesses to the accident. Allison was nervous they had left traces at the site of the accident. They couldn't have anyone knowing what they had done. Maybe Evelyn had been right. After Emily walked around the hospital, she told Franklin and the others some things. She told them to comfort Franklin at home and to not let them know anything about Eric's accident. After that, she drove from the hospital. She made sure no one was following her before she turned the car by herself. After making sure that no one was following her, she drove slowly back to the hospital. Marilyn and Peter were sitting in Eric's room. She had called them to sit with Eric for a bit. Is he awake? Emily rubbed her forehead. When she saw Allison today, she forced herself not to act up. It was difficult to sit idly by and not react to Allison, especially knowing her part in all of this. The audacity of this woman was incredible. Not yet. Marilyn moved forward to take her bag and squeezed Emily's shoulder. Are you tired? Do you want to get some rest? No need. Emily shook her head and asked. Have you two eaten? Let me see what is around here and order some for you. As she spoke, she walked forward. When she saw Eric's sleeping face, she sighed helplessly. We don't have much appetite either. Don't worry about it. Marilyn hurriedly stood beside Emily and softly said, Are you sure you can do it? You seem so tired. Emily was just about to comfort Marilyn when she saw Eric's hand move. He moved! Emily shouted. Immediately after, not only did Eric move his fingers, his entire body began to convulse. The monitoring equipment began to sound alerts. Peter quickly went to call the doctor and they rushed to treat Eric. Emily struggled with watching Eric seizing. The medical team began to work on him to try to get the seizures to stop. She had to be strong for him, but it was hard. After the team was done, the doctor turned to Peter, Marilyn, and Emily. He is conscious, but won't be able to speak for a bit. At least he was awake now. That was an improvement. However, her heart fell when she saw the confused look on Eric's face. He struggled to focus his eyes on her, asking, Who are you? It was the one question she hadn't expected. How could he not recognize her? Had she lost him again? Emily was stunned on the spot. Her face was full of shock. What was going on? Why did he not recognize her? Could it be that he lost his memories again? The pain Emily suppressed in her heart surged, tears immediately appearing in her bloodshot eyes. 
Eric looked and the corner of his mouth that was about to rise immediately withdrew. He did not care about the IV drip in his hand. He spread out his arms and said softly, I'm teasing you. Emily, I'm awake. I'm here. Come give me a hug. Emily still had tears on her face as she looked at him in a daze. Really? Yes, really. Eric's voice was gentle. Emily's tears flowed. She rushed over and burrowed into Eric's arms. It's okay, don't cry. I shouldn't have teased you. That was mean of me. Eric tried to comfort her. He pulled the IV from the back of his hand and stirred in the bed. Emily was angry. You teased me? How can you lie to me? Do you know how scared I was? I was wrong. He kept whispering to Emily and holding her hand tightly. It was too embarrassing. She didn't want to be this way in front of Franklin and Marilyn. Emily kept her eyes closed, Eric sensing what she was feeling. He comforted her and said, They have already left. It's fine. It's okay. Just stay calm. He carefully lifted Emily's head. When he saw her bloodshot eyes, his heart hurt. It's okay. Everything is fine. I am here. I have always been here. Eric hugged her again and comforted her gently. Emily gently touched his head. Does it hurt? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. Eric said in a low voice. He didn't want her to worry. It must be painful. How can you lie to me? I know you're in pain. Emily's eyes searched his face. Eric held her hand and squeezed it, a smile teasing his lips. She could stare a lifetime into his eyes. You scared me to death, you know? I thought you forgot you were Eric and reverted back to Carter. Emily sniffed and wiped her eyes. She raised her hand and wanted to hammer Eric's chest, but she could not bear to. In the end, Emily just sighed heavily, looking at Eric. The moment seemed to stretch, neither one of them wanting it to end. If she could, she would spend the day in the hospital bed with him, just quietly talking to one another. The longer the moment lasted, the more she didn't want it to end. Eric smiled and held her in his arms. He raised her hand again. When he saw that there was nothing on her finger, he frowned. Where's the ring I gave you? It's at home. What's wrong? Emily had just finished speaking when her eyes widened in shock. Wait! Did you... Have you regained your memory? Eric raised his eyebrows and the corner of his mouth curled into a faint smile. You remember? Emily asked with uncertainty. Eric smiled. Yes, I remember everything. Emily smiled and squealed in happiness. Really? Do you really remember everything? Yes, I remember everything. It is such a relief. Eric smiled and gently stroked her hand. Is it because of the car accident hitting the wall? Emily carefully looked at Eric's head. Eric nodded and said, I think so. When I woke up, I just remembered everything. It all came to me when I awoke. Emily opened her mouth several times but could not say anything. She couldn't believe what he had just said. Emily's phone suddenly rang. She took it out and saw that it was Damon calling. Emily, can you come over? I just received the news that Allison is rushing to the Parker family. She's planning on exposing the news of Mr. Parker's injury. Emily immediately stood up with a solemn expression. Allison led her men and rushed to the Parker family in a threatening manner. I'm not lying to you. I received the news that something happened to Eric. Each and every one of them said that nothing had happened, especially the woman that Eric had taken a liking to. What was her name again? Oh, right. It was Emily. I suspect that she deliberately suppressed the news. Her goal is to seize the opportunity to take over the Parker family. Allison raised her voice. She decided not to wait any longer. She knew the longer she waited, the more time Eric had to prepare. If she delayed until he woke up, it would give him the time to spin this in his favor. So today, Allison brought Mr. Parker's, who was her grandfather's cousin, to uphold justice. She wanted to see what that woman Emily was going to do. Damon stopped them as they walked into the building. I assure you, Eric really is fine, as is Mr. Parker. I wonder why you say that? Stop pretending! I didn't find out anything about his supposed business trip. There are no records supporting this at all. Where is he? I demand to see him. 
If there is nothing wrong with him, we need to speak with him immediately. Allison's arrogance was on full display. Damon said calmly, What makes you think he will entertain you without an appointment? You can't simply come in here and demand to see him without an appointment. Who do you think you are? Stop stalling. All I'm asking is for you to put to rest the rumors that something is wrong with Eric. Let me see him and I will leave. The rumors you started? I'm sure Eric will be deeply touched by your concern. At this time, a voice suddenly came from behind Damon. Allison, remember what you said? Don't hit yourself in the face when the time comes. Eric was wearing a black suit. He looked like a god who had descended from the heavens. He slowly walked over. When Allison saw him, his eyes widened in shock. She could not believe it. How is this possible? Allison kept stepping back, looking like she had seen a ghost. Why was Eric here? Wasn't he injured? Mr. Parker's cousin frowned. Allison, what's going on? Didn't you say something happened to Eric? But he's here, safe and sound. Something really happened to him! Allison weakly defended herself. Eric raised his eyebrows. Allison, how would you know such things, unless you were involved in something like this? Do you care to comment? The reason there were no documents about my trip is that I drove myself there. I didn't fly. Allison did not know what she should say. If she continued speaking, it was equivalent to confessing to her. Once again, all of her plans had failed. Allison gnashed her teeth. What are you trying to do, Allison? This time, Eric was the one who was aggressive. He stepped forward and looked down at Allison, who was starting to panic. At a time like this, everyone hoped that the Parker family could stabilize itself. But you? You have a completely different focus. You apparently thought I had been injured, and rather than coming to the aid of the family, you chose to spread rumors. Allison kept stepping away from Eric, her back covered in a layer of cold sweat. She regretted her decision now. She should have discussed this matter with Evelyn. Now she was alone. How could she go against Eric? Mr. Parker's cousin frowned again. Allison, you are too reckless. Why are you causing trouble? Allison opened her mouth but had nothing to say. She could only leave in a sorry and resentful manner. After they left, Damon immediately supported Eric and quietly returned to the office. Emily was waiting for him. When she saw the two of them come in, she immediately pushed the wheelchair over to Eric. Are you okay? When they had received the news about Allison's arrival, Emily and Eric had rushed over to confront her. Eric's body was so weak he had to be in a wheelchair. He could only stand for a short period of time. Collapsing into the chair, Emily said, Damon, can you get the car, please? He needs to go back to the hospital. I'm fine. Eric held her hand and squeezed it gently. Emily sighed heavily. She half squatted and held Eric's hand. Allison left today. She should not be looking for trouble for a while. She was humiliated today. It will be a while before she tries again. So when you are well, we will start to fight back. I want to settle this score with her properly. Emily gritted her teeth, her eyes full of anger. Seeing her like this, the corner of Eric's mouth could not help but rise. After he remembered everything, he suddenly felt very lucky that Emily still came to find him when he lost his memory. To him, Emily really seemed to have magic. When Emily looked up, she saw the love in Eric's eyes. She was stunned for a moment and smiled. What are you thinking about? I'm wondering what I did to be lucky enough to have you in my life. Eric's voice was quiet, but his tone was serious. Shouldn't I be saying this to you? I feel so lucky to have you in my life. Allison quickly returned to the hospital with a gloomy expression. Allison, I know what you are thinking, but now everything is related to the development of the Parker family. Don't you know how many people are eyeing us because your father is in the hospital? We must fight together and stabilize the situation. We must not cause any internal strife. The man who spoke was Mr. Parker's cousin's voice was stern. Allison stiffly nodded her head with an unwilling expression. She actually let Eric get out of the situation again. Her plan was easily foiled. How could this keep happening? She had earned nothing for all of her planning and scheming. 
she had even made a fool of herself in front of everyone. How could she move forward now? What did the future hold for her? The more Allison thought about it, the more worried she became. Her brows were tightly knitted. Allison, where did you go just now? I was just about to look for you for something. Evelyn slowly came over. Her expression did not change as she looked at Allison. Actually, she knew what this person did just now. It was just that pretending to be stupid at the right time was the true way to survive. Allison's face was cold. What's wrong? The doctor said that father has stabilized. He's doing well. His vitals are continuing to improve. Allison closed her eyes, taking a deep breath. There were so many people from the Parker family outside, so it's not a good idea to make waves. There are so many people from the Parker family outside, so it's not a good idea to make waves. We need to bide our time, Evelyn said. Allison's face was still gloomy. Her mind was a mess, and she was not in the mood to talk, and she was not in the mood to think about anything else. She could only wave her hand impatiently. We will talk about these things later. Allison, what's going on? Evelyn lowered her voice, frowning. Did something happen? You seem to be in a bad mood. Allison looked at her sister's concerned expression and finally could not help but tell her everything. Is that so? Evelyn was surprised. Sister, it is not your fault this time. Eric and Emily are simply too cunning for their own good. Do you think so too? It is really not my fault, right? I found a great opportunity. It just didn't go my way this time. Allison quickly said and urgently found recognition. Evelyn nodded vigorously. Thank you for the support, Evelyn. It means a lot to me. We need to work together and come up with a plan together. I promise to listen to your guidance more in the future. Evelyn smiled gently and comforted her. But her eyes were hard to read. She seemed to be displeased with her sister. However, this was what she wanted. She had let Damon know in advance. She needed to rein in her sister. Only when Allison realized that she could not do anything right would she believe in Evelyn. Eric went back to the hospital for a checkup and then left the hospital later that night. No one knew what Allison would do now, so it was better to be careful. However, he did not go back to the Parker family. Instead, he brought John to the Cooper family estate. Mr. Cooper happily hugged John and played with him. The pair chatted and played together. Even if they sat on the sofa and watched television, they never stopped talking. How's the head? Does it still hurt? Emily squatted down and looked back and forth at the gauze across Eric's forehead. Fortunately, there was no blood. Otherwise, she might not even be able to sleep tonight. It's okay, it's nothing serious. You don't have to be so nervous. Eric smiled and chuckled. The two of them returned to the room on the second floor. Emily closed the door and helped Eric to the bed. The two of them looked at each other and smiled. She was always calmer when she was close to Eric. He calmed her down just by being close. Tell me about what happened when you woke up after falling off the cliff. Tell me about when Tori was with you. Emily asked softly. Although she knew Tori did a lot of things during that time, Emily did not want to miss anything about Eric, especially during that time of his life. Eric scratched her chin and said softly, When I woke up, it was very strange, like coming through a fog. I wasn't alone, but I didn't recognize anyone. I felt out of sorts and very confused. Tori was there, trying to soothe me and keep me calm. She must have known how strange I was feeling because she rarely left my side. He was someone who had a strong desire to be in control. Everything had to be under his control. However, the confusion and unease brought about by the memory loss was something beyond his control. It was difficult for him to endure. After Emily heard that, her heart ached. She didn't want Eric to ever suffer. At that time, I was so focused on John. I thought Adrian had taken him. I couldn't control myself and couldn't think straight. I know, it's okay. You had a lot to deal with. Eric stroked her hair slowly. Don't blame yourself anymore. Look, I'm doing well. Despite the accident, it's not a setback. With my memories back, I can continue to do well for the Parker family and for myself. He thought about everything he had gone through in the last year. It was almost unbelievable. He also thought about Emily. 
When he thought he was Carter, he had still felt it was unbelievable. Emily chuckled, her eyes bright even in the dim light. I am so glad you're back. You are so much a part of me. I can't imagine a day without you now. Eric raised her eyebrows and slowly lifted Emily's chin. When he saw the smile on the woman's face, the corner of his mouth also began to rise. I can't imagine a day without you either. You really are amazing. Every day I fall a little more in love with you. The moon outside the window cast bars of silvery light across the floor in the bed. It was like magical pixie dust casting the entire room in a pale glow. They remained side by side on the bed amid the moonlight, just soaking up each other as the night aged around them. Some time later, she awoke with a start, the moonlight gone, her mind clouded with sleep. Eric was still next to her, his eyes opening, looking at her. They both smiled again. What time is it? Emily asked, not wanting to move. Almost two. Emily nodded, burrowing deeper against the pillow beneath her head. She let out a long sigh, hoping this wasn't some dream to be ripped away when the morning came. Emily felt the joy swelling in her heart. She didn't want to ever lose that feeling again. It's been so long since we've been together. I don't want to wait that long again to see you and be with you. I don't either, Emily said. I'll have to be more careful since Allison and her crew are obviously out to get me. I don't want to take a chance and get hurt again. I couldn't bear to not wake up next to you every morning. Emily didn't know what to say. She didn't want to imagine a day when she didn't wake up next to Eric. His calming demeanor and the way he touched her heart with every word fueled something inside she couldn't begin to explain. I will be extra careful for you and for me. For us. Eric looked at her without blinking for a few moments. She could feel his love in his gaze. Her eyes welled with tears. Did I say something wrong? Eric asked, with concern all across his face. Emily blinked the tears away and shook her head. No, not at all, Eric. It's just been an emotional roller coaster, but I'm not ready to get off the ride just yet. Good. Eric chuckled, his smile comforting. Eric teased her palm with his thumb before saying, You never answered my question. Where is the ring I gave you? Emily was stunned. She did not expect him to bring up the ring again, she said. I put it away after you fell from the cliff. I just couldn't bear to look at it. And now? Now? Well, now I think I'd like you to put the ring on my finger personally. She knew where the ring was and loved how it looked. It was beautiful. Eric smiled, pinched Emily's ear, and said softly, Okay, I think that sounds like a good idea to me. We'll have to do that soon. Her heart swooned. His voice teased her heart and ignited her mind to imagine a future once thought impossible. A future with Eric. When Emily woke up the next morning, sunlight streamed through the windows. She was about to rouse Eric with a kiss when a knock sounded on the door. She heard the quiet voice ask, Are you awake, Emily? She knew who it was immediately. She hadn't expected John to be awake so early and wanted to push Eric out of the bed. She didn't want to have to explain to John why he was here in her bed. Eric awoke his eyes wide, a smile teasing his lips. Emily answered with one of her own. The bedroom door opened, John walking into the room. Emily? Dad? Why are you still in bed? Come on, I have to get to school. Wake up! Emily touched her lips in embarrassment. Just as she was about to say something, she saw Eric squatting down and rubbing his son's head. Good morning, John. I was too tired last night and slept here. Really? John tilted his head. Grandpa told me not to disturb you last night. I figured you were both exhausted. Emily smiled and chuckled. Well, that was nice of Grandpa, wasn't it? I sketched a bit last night and then fell asleep. It tired me out. I tell you what, since I didn't come tuck you in last night, how about I read you a story tonight? John tiptoed over and gave Emily a hug. Okay, I will wait for you tonight. When John turned around and left, Emily let out a long sigh of relief. When she turned around and looked at Eric, she found that he was still smiling. That was close. He knows we are together, Emily. He's a smart kid. 
Emily nodded and said, I know, I just panicked for some reason. Eric narrowed his eyes and touched his head beneath the gauze. He winced. Still hurts a bit. Does it seem like it's getting better? Eric nodded. I think so. Good. I should get going and take John to school. Do you want to come with us? I can drop you off at the Parker family office. Yes, thank you. They got ready in a hurry and went downstairs where John was waiting. Allison gained nothing for her little charade yesterday. I'm not sure if she'll stay quiet for the next few days. No matter what, we need to be careful. Emily nodded. I will. She was thankful that he recovered his memories, but knew the storm wasn't over just yet. Not with Allison still in their lives. Don't worry, I have already sent people to investigate the recent movements of Allison and Evelyn, as well as into what happened before my grandfather, before he lapsed into a coma. Emily nodded, her smile teasing his eyes. After seeing Eric walk into the office building, Emily pulled out of the parking lot and headed to the prison. While she hadn't come to see Adrian in some time, Peter was keeping tabs on him, making sure his stay was as miserable as possible. She didn't know what to expect when she walked into the visitor area. She and Mr. Cooper were investigating her son's disappearance. They had found records showing the boy had gone to the hospital, but after that, he just vanished. There was no trace. They couldn't even find the doctor who had treated him. There was clear proof of hospitalization, but nothing more. What had happened to the boy while he was there? It was as if all the records had been destroyed. Who was behind this? Who had helped Adrian to destroy the records? What was his purpose? She didn't know what to do. Emily knew she couldn't push too hard at Adrian because he would just shut down and not give her the information she needed. She would have to find another way to gain his confidence. What should she do? What would he want to take her child away? Why would he want to take her child away? Emily was going over this strategy in her mind as she waited for Adrian to enter the visitor area. She had planned on asking him questions immediately, but that changed when she saw him. She was stunned by his appearance. Adrian was even more miserable than she had imagined. Peter had been ensuring his stay in the prison was anything but peaceful, but she did not know what it had done to Adrian. Now she knew. He had bruises and cuts and various stages of healing across his face. His eyes were like that of a wounded animal. They were no longer the bright blue they usually were, but instead a dull gray. Emily could not imagine what he had gone through, but in her heart, she knew he had more than deserved it. How are you doing, Adrian? Emily raised her eyebrows. Adrian clenched his fists. How do you think I'm doing? I didn't do this to my own face. You need to tell them to stop. Emily, I have already gone to jail as you wish. Why are you still torturing me? Tell me where my son is. If you tell me, I will tell them to leave you alone. Her voice was quiet, but her meaning was clear. Adrian stared at her. After a while, it only mattered to mutter. I don't know. What do you mean? Emily's expression was tense, brow creased. The boy was sick. I sent him to the hospital, but the next day, the hospital administrators told me the boy had been taken. He was missing. I don't know where he went. Adrian held his head with both hands in pain. That's all I know. I swear I didn't lie to you. Emily, tell the people to stop. Unfortunately, she could not tell whether Adrian was lying to buy time or the truth. It's true. At that time, I thought the boy wasn't very important. The child wasn't mine, so I didn't want to keep him. I figured he would stay in the hospital and receive treatment, and I would pick him up later and figure out what to do with him. Only I never got the chance. I do not know what happened to him. Adrian sounded confident, even if his eyes were still faded. Emily didn't relent, her eyes hard. Adrian, you are locked up here. You are responsible for terrible crimes and will have to pay for them. Why would I possibly make it easier on you? I won't be helping you in any way unless you help me. I wish you luck, Adrian. I really do. I've told you everything I know. What do you want me to do? Adrian's voice held a whiny quality to it she had never heard. He looked miserable. Emily's face darkened. Do you still think I care about you at all? Why would I want to get you released from prison? You killed Grace, Adrian. And for that, you should have to pay. I can't bear that debt. 
Only you can. Adrian stopped shouting when he heard her. He looked at her, blinking rapidly, his mouth hanging open. I can't let you out. It's impossible. This is a matter for the courts. But believe me, I will make sure you suffer every single day. I will come see you every once in a while just to make sure you're still miserable. Emily stood up abruptly. She did not even want to face Adrian for a second longer. Was he telling her the truth about her child? Did Adrian really not know where her son was? Under Evelyn's arrangement, Allison took the time to meet Mr. Winthrop's wife, Kitty. Mr. Winthrop was Mr. Parker's lawyer. He had the will. They needed to know what it contained. Normally, she wouldn't want to socialize with someone like Kitty, but she didn't have any choice. Allison put a smile on her face and said, Kitty, it's been a long time since you came out to dinner with us. Take a look at this necklace Evelyn bought in Paris last month. She just knew this necklace would be right at home around your neck. Please take a look at it and tell me if you like it or not. Allison was an expert in socializing. When she finished speaking, Kitty's face was full of smiles. She hurriedly opened the box and saw the diamond necklace inside. The smile on her face blossomed. How sweet of you, Evelyn. This is just so beautiful. Let Evelyn help you put it on. Only our Kitty's beauty can match this necklace. Allison gave a look and Evelyn immediately stood up and helped Kitty put the necklace on with a smile. Do you like it, Kitty? Evelyn asked. I like it too much. Evelyn, your taste is as exquisite as ever. Kitty was indeed very satisfied and looked at the mirror inside the box. The three women began talking about this and that, Allison not showing her cards. She knew she had to be careful. She had to bring up the will in casual conversation. If she wasn't careful, Kitty would smell a rat. After their small party ended, Allison personally drove Kitty back to her house. Kitty was overwhelmed by the gesture and the gift. When she got out of the car and headed to her door, Allison turned to Evelyn. We need to keep pressing her. We can't let Mr. Winthrop get wind of what we're doing either. Evelyn raised her eyebrows and did not have any objections. She just nodded lightly. It was okay. She could still endure it. Now she only needed to help Allison deal with Eric and take control of the Parker family again. It wouldn't take long to bring Eric down. Now they had found out several weaknesses of Kitty's. She had gambling debts. They could use it as a leverage to get the information they needed. It would only be a matter of time before she would tell them what they wanted to know. They would find out the contents of the old man's will and then hatch their final plan. With their control... Mr. Winthrop wouldn't be able to change the will no matter how much he wanted to. While Allison had unsuccessfully tried to kill the old man, it would be best if he were gone once they had control over the Parker family. There would be no one to stand in their way if he died. At night, Eric had just arrived at the hospital when he saw Allison gathering everyone together. The recent news has been good. Mr. Parker is recovering nicely. While we appreciate all of your support, we can't all stay here. It's causing too much of a distraction for the hospital staff and drives the Parker family business. We understand your feelings, but this is starting to get out of hand. It's also drawing a lot of attention from the media. The rumors are getting worse. Please go back to your daily routines. If anything changes, I will reach out to everyone in time. Allison said, rubbing the corner of her eye, dabbing away tears. The Parker family present did not expect Allison to suddenly bring up this matter. They were waiting here because they wanted to know how Mr. Parker was doing and what the latest plan was for management. Who was running the company? Who was making the decisions? It seemed no one knew. They had remained in the hospital because they wanted Mr. Parker to know he had their support. Any of the upper management team would gladly help him in any way possible. Thus, they discussed in detail and looked into each other's eyes. These people followed Allison words and expressed their hearts but they decided they wouldn't remain in the hospital. They would return to their jobs and await word from Allison. Eric frowned, watching the interaction. Allison normally would not care about this kind of thing. Moreover, she wanted to manipulate the people gathered in support. More than that, though, she wanted to make sure that Mr. Parker didn't have many supporters nearby. The only reason he could think of to do such a thing was to make sure whatever plan they were about to hatch wouldn't be discovered until it was too late. He could not guess what Allison was thinking at the moment, but after seeing Evelyn behind her, 
he became even more certain that they were up to something. They were, once again, plotting against the Parker family. They were scheming. He had to find out what it was before it was too late. At the time, Evelyn's gaze passed over Eric. He raised his brows without batting an eyelid. Evelyn's gaze was still as hypocritical as always. She couldn't hide her ambition from his gaze.